Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you're having a good day. This video is about ozone and UV light. Ozone is a gas we have probably all heard of, but what do you know about it? Take a moment to review what you know about ozone already, and I hope that this video will teach you something new. First, let's look at what ozone is. Ozone is a form of oxygen that absorbs harmful ultraviolet light from the sun when it is in the atmosphere, but ozone is also poisonous to our bodies. Ozone is pure oxygen, but it is not O2 like the oxygen molecules in normal air. Instead, three oxygen atoms form a triangular molecule with the formula O3. Side note, we said that ozone is poisonous to the body, technically so is O2. Normal oxygen is poisonous, but we still need it to live. Oxygen is really, really good at reacting with things, and this is why our bodies can use it to help us make energy. Unfortunately, it can also react with our bodies, and this can cause damage too. UV light are high energy light beams that come from the sun. UV is the same kind of energy as normal light. It is all on the electromagnetic spectrum. Infrared is similar, but not as dangerous because it is lower energy. Both of these forms of light are invisible to us because our eyes have not evolved to detect it, but it is still there. Infra, by the way, means below in Latin, and ultra means beyond. So that's what the names of these lights mean. Infrared means below red, and ultraviolet means beyond violet. But all UV light is not the same. There are four different types of UV light. Yes, we are subcategorizing UV light. These are based on the different wavelengths or frequencies of the light wave. UVA is not a major problem. It can cause minor sunburn after long times, but it is not something that we worry about. UVA is closest to visible light, 400 to 315 nanometers. A nanometer is a billionth of a meter, or if you prefer, a millionth of a millimeter. UVB causes sunburn and can kill sensitive creatures in the sea if they are not protected. UVB light is 315 to 280 nanometers. And UVC damages DNA very quickly and is very harmful. UVC is 280 to 100 nanometers. Vacuum UV is extremely high energy radiation found in space. It is absorbed by nitrogen and since nearly 80% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, it is not a major problem. Vacuum UV is 100 down to 10 nanometers. Now let's look at the ozone layer itself. We find it around 20 to 40 kilometers up in the lower stratosphere. On the diagram, you can see the yellow line peaking over to the right where there is most ozone in the atmosphere. Here, ozone is around two to eight parts per million and around 90% of the ozone in the atmosphere is found in this ozone layer. We can see the three types of UV radiation coming in from above. UVC can be blocked by normal oxygen, but the ozone layer filters out the very last UVC so that basically none of it reaches ground level. The green UVB bar in the middle comes in, but as the ozone in the atmosphere increases, more and more of it is filtered out, so that only a very small amount of UVB reaches the ground. Imagine how bad your sunburn would be if that whole green bar got to ground level. Ozone is mostly transparent to UVA radiation, but fortunately that is the safest kind. So most of the UVA bar on the right reaches ground level, but this is not a major problem for us. 
There are chemical dangers to the ozone layer, however. Many manufactured chemicals, especially chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs from fridges and aerosols, react with ozone. If these chemicals are allowed to drift up to the stratosphere, they can react with the ozone and steal it from our global sunshield. CFCs last for about 100 years in the atmosphere, so there is a high chance they can drift up to the stratosphere and react with ozone. CFCs were banned in aerosols, but they are still used in fridges. Let's also have a quick look at how radiation affects our chemistry. How does UV light damage our cells? Well, as we've said before, radiation is a kind of energy, and when energy hits cells, it can cause damage. Often, what happens is that electrons are blasted away from a molecule, meaning that it creates a dangerous free radical molecule, which easily reacts with nearby cells. Sometimes these free radicals react with DNA and this can reprogram a cell to reproduce uncontrollably and this is what we call cancer. And there are other types of damage that can be caused by radiation too. Obviously, less serious cell damage is much more common, like sunburn. But sunburn still is not much fun. To help us combat the effects of radiation is the chemical melanin. Skin color determines how we are affected by UV light. All skins produce a dark colored pigment called melanin when exposed to ultraviolet radiation. This is the reason you might get a suntan when you go outside. Melanin absorbs the radiation and stops it from penetrating the skin to the tissue below, reducing the chance of cell damage. Darker skinned people have a lot of this pigment in their skin, so they are harmed much less by UV radiation. Finally, we're going to look at the effect called tropospheric ozone. This is something to do with our modern machines. Cars and other machines burn fuels at very high pressure. This is a special type of burning and it can produce different chemicals like carbon monoxide, unburnt fuel hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen like NO or NO2. O2 can be changed into ozone, O3, when it is combined with these chemicals in strong sunlight. So, by having all of these machines burning fuel down in the troposphere, the lowest level of the atmosphere, we can create ozone in the troposphere, and this is why it's called tropospheric ozone. But what are the problems of ozone at ground level? Well, if people breathe in the ozone, it can react with the blood and prevent it from carrying oxygen. Because of this, people's brains don't get enough oxygen and their organs can suffer from not having enough. It also causes problems for asthmatics and other chest problems too. Also, it is not just people in cities where these machines are located that can have problems from low-level ozone. Creation of low-level ozone is quite slow, and so when the weather takes reacting air masses away from cities, it can still be carrying pollutants which will react with the oxygen and create low-level ozone outside the city. And that is our video on ozone and UV light. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please leave a like or maybe share this video with a friend who you think might also enjoy it. And you can subscribe to my EP Science for more of our science videos. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.